Okay, hello friends. Uh, good day to you all, and welcome to this family Bible study. Last time in the last lecture, which was chapter 11, uh, we have had nine of the plagues come to pass, and the last plague being three days of darkness. And then in chapter 11, God... Um, had Moses uh, forewarn Pharaoh and the people of the next plague that he would bring to pass and of course God having previously said that he would harden Pharaoh's heart to cause all of these things uh, his signs and his wonders to be multiplied in the sight of the Egyptians number one to bring out the children of Israel out of the bondage and into the promised land and number two so that the Egyptians would know that the Lord Yahweh is God and at the end of chapter 11 uh, of course it says Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land again um, we're gonna be we're close to the going out of Egypt uh, we've got one more plague to come to pass and so we're gonna begin today in chapter 12 um, God I pray that you open eyes and open ears this day father and let us understand uh, in the simplicity that you would have us understand the wisdom and the message from your word that you would have us receive so with that, we're going to get right in it. Exodus chapter 12, a word of wisdom in Yeshua's precious name. Verse 1, and it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Verse 2, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And this month, this would be the month Abib, which means green ear month. Uh, afterward, it was called, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Nisan, meaning first, in place of Tisri, and Tisri became the seventh month. Uh, the first day of Abib is the new year, and this would fall on the spring, the beginning of the spring equinox, which is around April in our civil calendar uh, this day. Verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers a lamb for a house. And in the Hebrew, this word man is ish, meaning a great man of God, even a husbandman. The word lamb is say in the Hebrew, and that means one of a flock, i.e. a lamb or a kid. And a house by custom was not less than ten persons. Verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. This word souls in the Hebrew is nefesh. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And this has a, uh, a spiritual connotation about Christ because he was the uh, Passover lamb. He became our Passover. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 will document that. And he was without blemish or without sin. Verse 6. 
and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. This word kill in the Hebrew is shahat, and it means to slay as a butcher. And this word is used of man as well as animals. And in the evening, in the Hebrew means between the two evenings. This is probably between the decline of the sun and its setting. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. This verse also has a spiritual connotation and it's symbolic or excuse me the word strike is Hebrew word 5414 and it's nothan, nothan and it means to give put or apply and this verse is symbolic of Christ's blood the lamb's blood being the blood of Christ him being the Passover lamb uh, that we put on the doorpost of our homes to cause the angel of death who is Satan's evil spirit to pass over or stay away from our houses and we do that and if you're a Christian um, you can take the oil of our people olive oil ask God to bless it and place it anoint the doorposts and the door jam with the blood of Christ and it will keep uh, evil spirits from coming into your house you may have to uh, you know reapply it every once in a while but it works verse 8 and they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it and this roast with fire that means it needs to be cooked not raw and unleavened bread is symbolic of Christ who is the bread of life and who was without sin or unleavened verse 9 eat not of it raw nor sodden meaning boiled at all with water but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof this word pertinence is Hebrew 7130 it's kereb and it means the center or the, the middle part verse 10 and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire meaning uh, no leftovers what whatever's not eaten in that sitting uh, is burnt with fire verse 11 and thus shall ye eat it <clears throat> with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover Yahweh's Passover and this verse 11 uh, this loins girded it says and you shall eat it with your loins girded and that means uh, the loose flowing garments fastened up that they used to wear back at this time even men fastened up with a girdle or a belt making the men ready for action and this is symbolic of Ephesians chapter 6 14 where our spiritual belt is the truth the Word of God that makes us ready for action battling the enemy and beloved if you don't have that Word of God that truth to gird yourself up with you're not going to be ready for action against the enemy and in this generation this final generation you need to be ready for action against the enemy because the false messiah is on his way he is coming and if you're not ready you're gonna be taken in and you're gonna worship him thinking he's Christ don't make that mistake open your Bible get in the Word of God and understand 
the plan of the day because he tells you all things. It's all written in here. And uh, if you want to know, you know, what's going on, why we're here in this flesh body, you know, what's the reason for all this, then get in the Word of God and find out the plan of the day because he tells you everything within, within his Word. Or start studying under a, a teacher that teaches the Word of God chapter by chapter and verse by verse where it's thus saith the Lord God and not um, some man blowing hot air for an hour because if you want to know the truth of this world and, and creation and, and everything um, the universe you need to read the Word of God. You're not going to find the answers, the, the important answers that you need to know in this life from the Word of man. You're just not going to find it. So get in the Word of God or find a teacher that teaches the Word of God chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And so the, your loins girded being girded spiritually with the word of God Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 and your shoes on your feet this is symbolic of, is symbolic of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 in a spiritual sense which says and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace so all this this even in the Old Testament it, it has it's symbolic for uh, spiritually for today, these end times. And this, ye shall eat it in haste, for it's the Lord's Passover, Yahweh's Passover. Eat it quickly, symbolic of eating the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ, who became our Passover. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 will document that. And when you partake of him being saved, you have your spirit quickened. And so this is symbolic, and you shall eat it in haste, which means quickly. So when you partake of the Lord's Passover, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Passover, you have your spirit quickened. And you can document that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, little g, small g, of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord, Yahweh. And Pharaoh was warned about this, of the smiting of all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, back in Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. But remember, God had caused Pharaoh's heart to be hardened for a reason. And I think a lot of these things happen, you know, as an example unto us today of what not to do and what to do. Verse 13. And the blood shall be unto you for a token or a sign, symbol, upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And spiritually in the end times, this means you want to be covered or washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because if you're not, whenever he returns at the seventh trump, uh, you're going to suffer a <clears throat> spiritual death uh, for the time during the millennium until Satan is released and you're going to get a another chance at the end of the millennium or you'll get um, tested at the end of the millennium when Satan is released and if you haven't learned and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ by then you're going to suffer the second death which is a spiritual death 
Um, and that's where your soul perishes, bl gets blotted out. And the memory of you is just gone forever and ever uh, for those who continue in the eternity. And if you want to continue in the eternity and have eternal life and live with our Heavenly Father in everlasting joy and happiness, um, you're going to need to repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have the, the blood of Christ on your house or as a token upon your house. You know, your, your spiritual house is this flesh body. And you want to have you want to be washed in that blood of Christ and be a Christian or <clears throat> at the seventh trump you're going to suffer a spiritual uh, death and have to go through the millennium and then have to be tested at the end of the millennium and at that time if you haven't figured it out by then and accept repented of your sins and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ then you're going to be blotted out as if you never existed does that sound like fun friend doesn't sound like fun to me but when you partake of the Passover spiritually the Lord Jesus Christ who became our Passover <clears throat> and wa repent wash yourself in his blood you don't have anything to worry about as long as after you become a Christian whenever you sin you continue to repent for your sins and try to walk in the ways of God best you can nobody's perfect in a flesh body but God knows your heart and your mind and if you're doing your best and you repent when you sin then you have nothing to worry about because your page in the book of life is clean every time you repent he takes all those sins and blots them out they're just gone I mean that's pretty awesome verse 14 and this day shall be unto you for a memorial the Passover and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever did he say for ten years no he said forever and guess what on Passover which most of the the churches in this world right now celebrate on Passover which is the highest holy day of Christianity being the day that the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified <clears throat> what are these churches out here doing they're celebrating and rolling Easter eggs to a God named Ishtar thinking that that God approves of what they're doing well the word Ishtar is only in the Word of God uh, and it's a mistranslation because the word uh, Ishtar is really Passover meaning Pascha meaning rest and most of the churches you see these days on the high holy day of Christianity they're out there rolling Easter eggs in the groves to Ishtar and if you want to know who Ishtar is, get you a, a, a Webster's or a good dictionary and look up the word Ishtar. And you're going to find out that Ishtar is a pagan goddess of fertility. And then the Easter eggs are probably going to make a little more sense to you. So what most of the churches are out here doing, whether knowingly or ignorantly, um, either way the Lord doesn't like it at all on the high holy day of Christianity they're out there rolling Easter eggs and with these little baskets and and everybody's got a big old mascot Easter bunny you know hanging out at their church or whatever they do on the high holy day of Christianity you know and they're they're celebrating as if they were you know worshiping Ishtar who is a, a pagan goddess of fertility and the pagans um, on on this day a lot of them are in the groves having sexual orgies which is what the the Easter Bunny you know quick like a bunny and the eggs are symbolic of 
I mean, how Christian is that? You know, I, I'm pretty sure our Heavenly Father is not happy at all. So, you know, think twice about going out and rolling Easter eggs on Passover, the high Christian holy day. I mean, that is if you want to stay in good standing with our Heavenly Father. Verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And this cut off means uh, that soul shall be killed. That's what cut off means. <clears throat> And this is symbolic of if you partaken of the Passover and then seven days you eat unleavened bread. This is symbolic of after you've partaken of the Passover, meaning you've believed, repented, believed upon the Lord, or believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, repented for your sins. And which is spiritually partaking of the Passover. So after you become a Christian, uh, where it says you shall put away leaven out of your houses, your flesh body being your spiritual house, you put away leaven, leaven symbolic of sin. So you want to put away sin. After you become a Christian, you want to put away sin out of your house, out of your body, and it says, For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And so, even if you become a Christian and a partaken of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and are saved, <clears throat> it's not a once saved, <clears throat> or it's not a, you know, come to the Lord Jesus Christ, believe upon Him, and then just sin the rest of your life and go to heaven. That, that ain't how it works. You've got to repent. And so... If you sin after you become a Christian and you don't repent, you can fall so far away from Christ that you can go to hell. And that's not a fun place to go. Just ask the, uh, the rich man who saw Lazarus on the other side of the gulf, <clears throat> Luke chapter 16, and uh, he was tormented over there. And he was just begging to have his servant, that was his servant in the, in, the, in, the, in the world while they were alive in flesh bodies, to just bring him just a drop of water because he was tormented. It was so hot. It was mentally, you know, his conscience was being seared like a hot iron and he wanted some of the living water and he couldn't get to it. And his servant, his beggar, who, uh, you know, laid at his gates of his of his uh, compound you know was over there in the bosom of Abraham in pure joy verse 16 and in the first day there shall be an holy convocation and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And this seventh day is it's sim spiritually symbolic of the millennium which will start, that's the thousand years, the Lord's day, because... Uh, which will start when Christ's feet hit the ground. And this is when God's elect will teach with Christ, which is spiritually feeding. God's elect will spiritually feed the children with spiritual truth, which is the Word of God. And so it says on the seventh day here, in the seventh day being symbolic of after the seventh trump, the millennium, the only work that's going to be done is God's elect 
teaching with him and feeding the children um, spiritual truth. And in this verse 16, it's saying, There shall no work, man or work be done in them, save that which every man must eat. And so the children in the millennium, will, the ones who didn't overcome, they're going to need to eat. And God's elect are going to be the ones who reign with Christ and feed the children that spiritual food during the millennium. The ones who, who haven't been taught or didn't overcome. And you can read about that documentation, Ezekiel chapter 44, verses 15 through 23, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Verse 17. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies, or hosts, out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Verse 18. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. That's seven days. 19. Verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. And this cut off from Israel, that means that means killed. Verse 20. Ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. And unleavened bread is bread without yeast. I believe, to the best of my knowledge, that's what it is. Verse 21. Then Moses called for the, all the elders of Israel, and said unto them, Draw out, and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover, or slay the Passover, butcher it. 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. This is, uh, hyssop is a plant whose twigs um, were used in the sprinkling of the blood. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of the house until the morning. And remember, this is um, as a sign. So when the Lord passes over through the land of Egypt to smite all the firstborn, this will cause him to pass over um, that house. And... You want to have the blood of Christ on your spiritual house in this generation, meaning you want to be a Christian um, because Satan is coming. Him and his fallen angels, they are coming. And although <clears throat> Satan is the only one uh, sentenced to death at this time by name, um, Ezekiel chapter 28, the fallen angels are also sentenced to death just not by name. And they're, they're coming, beloved. They are coming. They are right over the hill. Verse 23. For the Lord, Yahweh, will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, upon the doorpost, or upon the, the door jam, the lintel, the door jam, and on the two side posts, the Lord, Yahweh, will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And if you're a Christian and you're... Uh, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and in the word of God you don't have to worry about the enemy um, because if you're a real Christian he doesn't want anything to do with you 24 
And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Keep the Passover. And like I said, what are they, most of the churches doing out here on the Passover? They're out rolling eggs to Ishtar, some fertility goddess um, that the pagans worship. I mean, don't you think that makes God real happy? I don't think so. Verse 25. And it shall come to pass, when ye be come to the land which the Lord, Yahweh, will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass, not maybe, it shall, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? Question. Verse 27. That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's, Yahweh's Passover, or the sacrifice of, of the Lamb. And of course, Jesus Christ being the Lamb of God, and Yahweh's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Twenty-six. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And at this time, the children of Israel are obeying and they're doing what God had commanded Moses and Aaron. Um, probably because they're uh, in a really bad situation and under, you know, big time oppression. Do you think that uh, this attitude and this willingness of the children of Israel to do what the Lord has commanded, do you think it's going to last? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. And this great cry in the Hebrew, this is uh, from Hebrew Prime, Number 6817, it's Sa'ak, and it means a shriek. <clears throat> for there was not a house where there was not one, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Verse 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. Pharaoh called for Moses. He's always, when something goes wrong, here he is again calling for Moses and Aaron. He knows. And said, he knows where the Spirit of God is and who's in control. Pharaoh does. Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go. Serve the Lord, Yahweh, as ye have said. Verse 32. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Pharaoh knows uh, where, where the Spirit of God lies at and who's in control and who's blessed and who's not. He can tell. I mean, he's got people who are in his own, <laughs> own land, um, you know, about to uh, spoil him and, and all of his inhabitants and take the spoil up out of the land and Pharaoh's going to be happy to see him go. And he's already been through all these nine different plagues so far. Well, ten in this chapter. Verse 33. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We be all dead men. And this was foretold by Yahweh in Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, that uh, the Pharaoh and the, and the Egyptians would drive them out with a strong hand before God was, was done, before it was all over with. 
from the plagues. 34. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. They didn't even have time, you know, to for the yeast to, to settle in and leaven the bread. They had to get out of there in haste. Or they were getting out of there in haste. The Egyptians were were happily shoving them out the door. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed, or they asked, of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the Egyptians, uh, where this says, so they lent unto them, the Egyptians gladly gave them whatever they asked for in order to get get the children of Israel out of their land and their presence so that these plagues would stop and um, they could go back to uh, worshiping their uh, God's little G and worshiping the sun and whatever you know whatever they they did uh, their heathen idols they wanted the children of Israel and the Spirit of God gone out of here out of their land so they could get back to what they were doing and before all of them were destroyed. And, you know, back in 33, they said, we be all dead men. And so they were eager to give them whatever they wanted. Gold, silver, jewelry, jewels. It didn't matter. And this is um, the children of Israel going up out of the land of Egypt with spoils. And this is symbolic of, in the final generation, um, or even at the end of the millennium after everyone that hasn't been taught has been taught and then been tested you know the people who overcome and go into the eternity are going to have the blessings and the spoils uh, in the eternity that's just a fact friend and you don't want to be uh, you don't want to miss out on that so You know, and it's so easy to, to be a part of the family of our Heavenly Father. And all you have to do is have a change of heart. You know, not be wicked. Not want to be wicked anymore. And believe upon Him and His name, the Lord Jesus Christ. And repent of your sins. And then seek the thoughts of God and the... The commandments of God so you can understand how he wants you to live as a Christian and seek that in the Word of God because you're gonna find all your instructions that you need within his word and our Heavenly Father is so understanding you know he knows we're not perfect but he expects us once we become a Christian to repent of our sins and friend if you think that you can repent and gain salvation and then just continue on and sin the rest of your life and still go to heaven, I'm afraid you're mistaken. 